Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here in Dallas, Texas at SC18, and today I'm here with Galad Shaner from Mellanox. Galad, thanks for having me here this week. It's good nice, to see you nice, again. Nice to see you again, Rich. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's start at the beginning, uh, Galad. What are you guys showcasing here at SC18? So, you know, there's a lot of uh, new things coming at SC, which we are very excited to go and demonstrate. Um, I think the, the biggest thing is HDR. If you have an HDR, 200 gigabit per second, uh, we start shipping uh, HDR to first customers. We see the first system being deployed, uh, and we're gonna demonstrate HDR 200 gigabit per second at the Melnox booth. Okay. So if people are around here at supercomputing, uh, they're more than welcome to uh, visit the Melnox booth and see the HDR demonstration, okay. see the 200 gigabit per second, and see some other uh, solutions built by our partners around around this technology yeah yeah is is that everything the switches the the, the channel adapters the, switches, all, the whole is the cables the adapters everything okay, we just uh, uh, finished the first deployment of uh, HDR Infiniben at the University of Michigan uh, it's a nice cluster it's a hybrid cluster mm -hmm. uh, there is a compute unit there is a GPU unit if you combine all the performance together, it's a little bit more than one yeah. uh, petaflop of performance. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of the first HDR system being deployed. Um, there are announcements coming from uh, Lawrence Livermore about the Corona system, which is another HDR system being deployed uh, okay. now in November. Okay. Uh, TAC, uh, Texas Advanced Supercomputing Center, made an announcement that they're going to build end of this year and, and to the beginning of next year. Okay. One of the top, uh, top five, top ten supercomputers in the world with HDR. We see a lot of demand, a um, lot of people waited to get HDR, and now we start shipping, we see a lot of systems that will be deployed with uh, the fastest technology that's, out there. That, that's exciting. So let's talk about Michigan just real quick. Uh, what, do, what value, why did they go with this route of technology? What would you say was the main reasons? Oh, multiple reasons. So first, HDR yeah. gives you much better performance. Right? Yeah. You get 200 gigabit per second per port, so that means that you can drive more bandwidth, you can analyze things faster, you can run uh, uh, deep learning frameworks, which is part of their mission in a high performance and high capacity. Mm -hmm. um, HDR also comes with HDR100. So that's the ability to have uh, larger Redix, a large, big, big, bigger uh, switch Redix. Right. We can go to 80 ports of a single switch. So you can actually build much larger infrastructure with less components. So you get the performance, you get more in-network computing acceleration engines, mm -hmm. which enables to run um, a lot of MPI functions on the network. You run things faster, low latency, yeah. uh, better cost effectiveness because of the higher Redix uh, and so forth. Sure. Huge amount of uh, reasons why to go to HDR or HDR 100, and this is why we see a lot okay. of uh, people going, uh, going to deploy the, this technology. Okay. Well, let me ask you a little bit about Ethernet, because you guys are famous for being able to run that as well on the same silicon. Is that the case here with this HDR uh, setup that you yeah, have now? No, so, so we, we so for first, yes, right? Yes. We, we provide both InfiniBand and Ethernet. Mm -hmm. um, on the network adapters, we support both protocols mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. on the same device. On the switch, we have different switches. There is different switches for InfiniBand, there is different switches for Ethernet. Um, the main reason is that um, if you try to use Ethernet, is the underlying network or to combine internet with something else you're going to get performance limitations because internet it's more complex there is more things you need to support it and so forth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know if you look on uh, infiniband switch infiniband switch runs in 90 nanosecond right if you look on ethernet switch fastest switch out there runs in around 300 nanoseconds right mm -hmm. now says a okay. switch that runs 300 yeah. nanosecond yeah. i think Cray that they announced their proprietary network which runs on underlying Ethernet, yes, again, yes. their switch is 300 nanoseconds, right? So I can have three switches of InfiniBand, and that would be faster than a single switch of Cray. Okay. So nice. there is a reason why not to use Ethernet and why try to avoid using Ethernet as an underlying network, for okay. example, or try okay. to combine. Wow. And that's wow. why we have the kind of separate switches. That makes sense. Um, in because of that, InfiniBand gives you much lower latency than any Ethernet or Ethernet-based switch yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can build much larger uh, yeah. network yeah, to scale yeah. better. It's more cost-effective okay. and so forth. Well, well, now, by the way, you know, yeah. talking about Ethernet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as we all know, there is a new top of hundred list yes. coming uh, coming out, um, and that list actually it's not just an HPC list, right? It mm -hmm. actually combines 
some HPC systems and some non-HPC systems. Some hyperscale type things. Hyperscale enterprise yeah, 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 and so yeah, forth. Right? Yeah. We know that so half of the list is HPC, half of the list is non-HPC. Mm -hmm. um, now on the InfiniBand side, InfiniBand continue to be the leading or you know, connecting the majority of the HPC platforms sure. on the list. We have the number one, which is uh, the Summit system, which actually increased their performance. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, they and increased and the performance on the list. And number two, Sierra as and well. Number two, Sierra, which also increased the number of yeah. the list, which yeah. also use InfiniBand. And then you have the number three, which is the system at the WUSI in China, which is also use InfiniBand. That's right. right. So That's InfiniBand right. is doing one, two, and three on the top 500. Mm -hmm. um, um, and so that's on the HPC side, on the hyperscale side, which are mainly use Ethernet, right. uh, we see more of Monox Ethernet. Okay. So Monox has a, a big portion of the 25 gig and above Ethernet market, mm -hmm. and that's reflect on the hyperscale systems, of right. course. Right. So out of the Ethernet, uh, more than half of the Ethernet systems on the list are using Monox. Mal right. <laughs> so you win, so you win either way. So we have, yes, yeah, so we have uh, the InfiniBand systems, we yeah. have more than half of the Ethernet systems. Yeah. So overall, uh, Mailnox connects 266 systems on the list. Okay. So right. it's more of the, more of, right. half, more, more than half of the list is actually using yeah, Mailnox. Yeah. Uh, wow. Part of that is HPC, part of that is hyperscale. Right. Well, Glad has kind of a wrap up question here. You know, AI is the big buzz here. It, it's, it's like lifting all boats right now. It's, right. it's really invigorating the HPC space. How does Mailnox help with doing AI, with all these GPUs, what value to bring to the table there? Oh, there there's multiple acceleration that goes into AI. Yeah. First, you know, AI and HPC requires almost the same things, right? Mm -hmm. So when you build an HPC infrastructure, that can be used for AI, right? You build yeah. AI, you can use from HPC. That's where we're seeing a lot of HPC connected with AI. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of things that we bring as acceleration engines yeah. works both or enable both. Mm -hmm. RDMA runs on both, right? All the deep learning frameworks today runs on RDMA. Yeah. Uh, GP Direct RDMA, that's another thing that covers both. And then we have Sharp, which is ability to do reduction or aggregation of data on the network itself. Okay. Um, with the e with the uh, we introduced Sharp with EDR switches mm -hmm. that was focusing ability to do reduction for small messages, HPC focus, doing all reduced operations, barrier broadcast kind of on the network, not on the CPU. Right. Um, with the HDR uh, switches, we enhanced Sharp to also support, support larger messages, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is what's target from a deep learning perspective. Sure, sure. Right? So this is where it covers both and we have initial results of using Sharp for uh, 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 on testing TensorFlow, um, on Hoavot uh, uh, framework, um, on ResNet 50 benchmark, we're seeing 16% of performance improvement comparing nickel without Sharp or nickel 2 without Sharp yeah. versus with Sharp, right, or using Sharp. So nice. the ability on the network, this is kind of initial numbers, we're seeing 16% of performance improvement uh, for ResNet. Excellent. And this is, you know, first numbers, we're going to see more. Yeah. So actually what we bring uh, for accelerating HPC, accelerate very nicely the deep learning frameworks, which is all about reduction operation right. and vice versa. Right. Well, in the end, Glad, it's all about performance. And uh, our, thanks for having me, and I hope you have a great week here. In Thank Dallas. you very much, Rich. It was my pleasure.